I'd like to call to order the September meeting of the Suffolk Historic Landmarks Commission. Even Do we have the roll call, please? Yes, good morning. Uh, Mr. Bissell? Yes. Ms. Coley? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Present. Mr. Hobbs? Here. Mr. King? Here. Ms. McCormley? Mr. Schaefer? Here. And Ms. Turner? Here. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, the minutes have all been distributed. Has everyone had an opportunity to, to uh, re review the minutes? Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? <clears throat> Is there a motion that we approve the minutes? Make so motion. Moved. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second? Oh, yeah. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no? Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, first item of new business. We have a request for certificate of appropriateness, HLC 2024-0015, submitted by Chinwindo C. Nogbo, property owner for exterior alterations of a property located at 216 Pennell Street. Can we have a staff report, please? Good morning. <clears throat> This request is for exterior alterations on property located at 216 Pinner. The property is part of the original Suffolk Historic District. It's last surveyed in 1987. The subject property and surrounding parcels are zoned RM, residential medium, and HC, historic conservation overlay. According to the National Register of Historic Places nomination form, the contributing structure was constructed in 1890. The applicant is proposing a new window void on the second story right side elevation. The physical dimensions and style of the proposed window will match the existing windows in profile and dimension. Additionally, the applicant is proposing to install handrails on either side of the front porch steps, while the applicant initially requested to utilize pressure-treated lumber upon further discussion with the applicant about the standards set forth in the historic district guidelines. The applicant has stated that they are willing to install handrails that comply with the guidelines, which are metal, contemporary, thin, and simple in profile with a matte finish. Upon review of this application, staff determined that the proposed new window void would not adversely affect the district as it does not significantly alter the structure's character or style. The proposed window will match the existing windows in all details, ensuring consistency with the building's historic appearance. Additionally, as the applicant has stated their willingness to install handrail, metal handrails that comply with the guidelines, staff recommends approval of HLC 2024-00015 with the conditions noted in staff's report. The applicant did let me know that they were unable to attend today and they appreciated your consideration. This concludes my presentation. I stand by for questions. Thank you. Okay, we'd like to open the floor for the public hearing. Is there anyone present who'd like to speak in support of this, op this application? One who'd like the president who'd like to speak, speak in opposition? If not, we'll close the public hearing on this item and have discussion among the commissioners. Any co thoughts or comments? I'd like to make a motion. Excuse me. I'd like to make a motion. We accept the motion is that we accept the <coughs> staff recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, we'll ask for a roll call vote for that, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bissell? Yes. Ms. Coley? Yes. Mr. Emerson? Yes. Mr. Hobbs? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. McCormley? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Turner? Chairman, the item passes by a vote of seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, second item. Request for Certificate of Appropriateness, HLC 2024-0017, submitted by Cordell Carter, applicant, on behalf of Higher Ground Outreach Church of God in Christ, property owner, for exterior alterations at property located at 132 Bank Street. Can we have the staff report, please? 
Uh, this request is, per, is for exterior alterations on property located at 132 Bank Street. This property is part of the original uh, Suffolk District, last surveyed in 1987. The subject property as well as the properties to the west and south are zoned Central Business District and HC Historic Conservation Overlay District, while the properties to the north are zoned RM Residential Medium. The National Register nomination form identifies this structure as a contributing re religious resource constructed in 1916. The applicant has stated that the doors are in poor condition and is proposing to replace the existing wooden double doors on the front facade that faces Bank Street. The existing wooden doors measure approximately 60 inches wide and 94.5 inches tall. He's replacing, or proposing to replace them with shorter aluminum doors measuring 60 inches wide and 80 inches tall. The applicant proposes to enclose the remaining 14 and a half inches above the replacement doors with plywood and aluminum siding to maintain the consistency with the front facade. The guidelines state that exterior doors, particularly primary entries located on front facade, are two important and imp are important decorative elements that can help identify the style and age as well as impart historic character. They go on to emphasize the preservation of the historic material and recommend that only damaged or deteriorated areas be replaced and that any replacements should match in material design dimensions and profile whenever possible to retain the character of these features and further encourage the retention of original doors. Upon review of this application, staff determined that the proposed partial enclosure, enclosure and replacement of the original doors with shorter aluminum doors would have a negative impact on the district as it would significantly alter the structure's character and style. Therefore, staff must recommend denial of the application as submitted. However, staff does recommend approval of repairing or replacing the doors in kind with all details to match the existing doors. The applicant is here to speak um, on behalf of his application and I'll stand by for any questions. Thank you. Okay, we'll open the floor for the public hearing. Uh, I see we have a person to speak in, uh, in favor, in support of the application. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, Commissioner. <coughs> uh, my name is Cordell Carter, and I've been the pastor of this particular um, house of worship since um, 2007. And we've been constantly repairing different items inside. But uh, as she stated, the structure is old. It's been there since 1916, and the doors can't last forever. And I've sent up pictures as far as what we're proposing to do. Uh, and I've done an extensive search is trying to find some doors that size and that width. The width is only 24 inches. And, you know, we've been going through sideways for years. <laughs> so I'm just trying to propose to get a standard size door. I will make sure that it matches the exterior um, that's presently on the building uh, just to be able to accommodate us. But the doors are rotten, as she's shown the pictures. And it's hard. We can't even get a catch for the uh, screws putting in new door handles. So I'm proposing that it's been long overdue to have these doors repaired. And uh, I just was seeing whatever suggestions the council or the commission may have. But uh, I'm a contractor. I can get it done, uh, and I can get it done in a manner that will be accommodable to the district. Anyone else? Who, uh, is there anything, uh, anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the? Of the uh application. If not, we'll uh, open the floor up for, com for commissioners for comments. We have qu anybody have questions or comments? Can you, uh, good morning. Good morning. Can you not get a, um, a custom door made? I appreciate the cost of that kind of thing, but something, a custom wooden door to match exactly the existing size and appearance? I have um, researched on some companies in Richmond and, and also Virginia Beach, and they were not able to assist me with that. They did make some other suggestions, and the suggestions is what I've submitted uh, as far as getting a standard-sized door. 
I don't know where to secure one. Maybe the commission can help me to get find something that tall and narrow to try to replace it in kind. I think it would have to be a, a custom piece for sure. <clears throat> Just checking, and I didn't know if you had an option like that previously. Well, I've searched and called several companies, and no one has taken the bite, the bit that mean the bait, to try to accommodate me with that. So. You know, I've been relegated to try to seek other sources that were more standard-sized doors because that's a 1916 door. I looked at it. To me, the door is really the outstanding architectural characteristics <coughs> of the building. Of, you know, I mean, to, to, of, of the building. And to me, to change that would really be would would be to, to ruin the <coughs> the key part of it. it. And this front surface of the door looks good. I mean, it looks to me like there ought to be some way to rebuild the door itself while preserving just the, fr the, the actual of the front surface that's visible. Uh, I would invite the commission to come by and look at the uh, frame and see how deteriorated it is and see the inside. Outside look good, but I've got pictures of the inside of where someone has tried to repair with wood putty to try to get something to catch for the handles that opens the doors. So you're welcome to come and see it. and. Look and see what the condition is, actually. I, I was going to say, I, I don't know if this is uh, possible or not, but I know they make eight-foot doors, pre-finished wood doors, and there may be a possibility you, you could get an eight-foot door uh, pre-finished and modify the head or the sill, you know, to get you down to the dimension you need. Um, I don't know if you presented a millwork shop with a, oversized door if they would be able to cut it down and reinforce the styles to take the hardware but it's worth asking I think uh, if you can't get a, if you can't find somebody to actually make the whole door from scratch I know doors are kind of tricky yes <laughs> so I have I don't have a um, meal work company in mind as the time to the, the uh, commission have anyone in mind that they could suggest so, so let me let me jump in. So the commission is not able to yeah. make direct suggestions. The State Department of Historic Resources does <coughs> maintain a list of contractors. I don't know if staff shared that with you, but but we can share that with you from the state level that has a whole list. But but commission is not able to make a recommendation. I will say that I I truly appreciate um, how difficult it is to maintain existing uh, elements such as this and there's something about a front door on a property in a historical neighborhood that is a real signature and um, sadly as difficult as I know it is to figure out a way to make this work I feel strongly that we do um, that we do keep the doors in the same height, width, shape as they originally were, um, a, a, as pictured. I think it would be. I think it would dramatically change the the sense and the history and the magnitude of the the magnificence of the property if we if the uh, header of the door was dropped down and you had a, a standard size door. I'm sorry. I wish there was a different, I felt differently. Being it is a front facade, is it a possibility that I can cut another opening on the side of the building that will not face Bank Street just so it'll be more functional and accommodable for our people to get in and out? Is that an option? Because it wouldn't be facing. I don't, think know, that, I, mean, I, get, I don't think that's something we could address right now. I think we're limited to just the... the the way it's spelled out to us right now, that, that might be something that... One thing I noticed just looking at the photographs is that the, it looks like the molding on the front is applied to the surface of the door. It's not a, a raised panel door. Right. So it's, it's a fairly simple, flat chunk of, of door. Uh, I know they make eight-foot eight doors, uh, probably in 3-0 widths. I don't know if they make them in a 2-6 width or not, but... Um, I would try to chase that rabbit a little bit and see if you can find somebody that's got a door that can be modified. 
I, I don't think you're I don't think you're up against any fire code regulations in terms of the the composition of the door. You just want to make it, you know, sturdy. And so uh, if you could nibble down a couple inches from the top and bottom, it seems like you might be able to get a, have enough of the top and bottom rails left to, to, to carry the door. Just a thought, so. D dumb architect thought, so you have to take <laughs> that in context. Thank you. The picture on the, on the left, is that the door that he was looking at, fixing? Putting a door like that? That's just the door, the original door. That's the original Don't. door on the left. Yeah. <coughs> so when I can control the so screen, the can we, he want to we do can find that? the one he wanted to do is the one on the right. Mm -hmm. he wants okay. to do those That's the inside This the is the door. inside version. That's the inside, inside. version. Mm -hmm. I don't see that one. This one. Yeah. Should be able to get I that up on the screen. Where you want. I see oh, this. There it is. Inside. It's the inside. From the hallway. Okay, so the and this outside. Is the outside. Yes. That's this the is out what we have to work with. That's the outside. Uh -huh. It's on the screen here now. So. Street like that one. This what is one. the difference in the door height as it exists now, and with what what you're proposing? It's 14 and a half inches. That would have to be cleared. Inches, okay. um, and I proposed on the back sheet to um, fill that in and make it just like the siding that's uh, presently there. Other comments? Other questions? Do we have a motion? I, I make a motion to support the staff recommendation. Motion that we support the staff recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So want to make it clear on your motion that your motion is to deny what his request was. That's correct. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? And I'm sorry, who was the second? Okay, thank you. Okay, could we have the roll call vote, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Bissell? Uh, yes. Ms. Coley? Yes. Mr. Emerson? I'm not sure what the right terminology is, but I want to recuse myself for conflict of interest. I'd like to clarify, ask for a clarification. Are, are mm -hmm. we voting? We're voting to deny. You're voting so, to so deny. A yes vote, a is, yes to vote deny. is to deny. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hobbs? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Ms. McCormley? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Yes. And Ms. Turner? No. Chairman, the motion is approved for denial as for the, with a vote of six to one. Thank you. Okay. Staff is going to provide him with the, the state. Yes. yes. Yes, and staff will follow up with you on further options. Well, and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Hey, uh, move on to staff report. Staff reports, please. Uh, administrative, administrative COA approvals. Uh, so Aaron just left, but um, there were no administrative approvals this month for COAs. Um, do we have a property maintenance update? Uh, at property maintenance <clears throat> enforcement update, uh, 342 uh, North Main Street. Uh, they have finally got the COP, the COA, then they have started on the roof. Hopefully, their roof be completed by the end of the week. Uh, 223 Bank Street, uh, the property still in violation. It's no longer for sale. We're trying to get some type of information on it, but we're unable. The bank is tight lipped on that uh, property. Uh, 219 uh, Clay Street, the property is scheduled to be demolished at the end of the month. Uh, 112 West Washington Street, we did receive a four-year request on the property. Hopefully someone is interested in buying and they will take it off our hands and make the, make the building beautiful again. Uh, 221 Bank Street, uh, there was no service on the summons that we had last month, uh, but I put it back in for October. 
301 to 307 Bank Street, those apartment buildings, they are actually working on renovating the buildings. They have started the interior. We're waiting for them to apply for the permits and their COA so they can make that beautiful, those do beautiful uh, buildings beautiful because they're, they're, if you you live over there, Mr. McCormick, so you know exactly what they look like. Uh, hopefully they'll make them look a lot better here in the next few months. 318 Bank Street, the property has been sold. So we're hoping that the new owner is going to do something with that property as well. 222 Bank Street, it was no service on the summons there for August, but the inspector have reissued it for October. 209 uh, Pearl Street, uh, the progress on it has been slow, but they have done some painting and installed new windows on that property as well. Uh, we did do a sweep on North Street. Just about all of the uh, violations have been corrected except for one, and that is at uh, 127 uh, North, North Street. He had to replace some spindles. It's hard for him to get them and get someone to get out there to do it, but he is on it. Uh, the sweep of Clay Street, we haven't had anyone to do anything on Clay Street, being that everybody is saying they're not doing anything and 2219 is gone. Uh, so we're working on getting that gone and then uh, putting the hammer to the metal on those folks with that, uh, with those properties. Thank you. No problem. We have a zoning update, please. Good morning, Commission. Kevin Alexander, zoning. Um, the only item we have under action is 400 West Washington Street. Um, the operator and the applicant um, actually asked for an extension, so today we'll be... Um, they should be coming into office to make application. If not, I'll move forward with the summons. Um, you have any questions for me? Questions? Good. No. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any announcements for, for this morning? Uh, no, except I do believe we will not be having a meeting in October. I believe we did not get any applications um, for October. I'll follow up with you, you know, for sure once, once I'm sure. But I think we're not we're not having a meeting in um, this is September, right? In October, <laughs> lose track sometimes. In October, uh, we didn't get any applications. Thank you. Okay, uh, there being no further business on the agenda, then we'll declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>